Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are talking about the new products that Essence has released in their spring-summer update for 2022. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I very much appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch another one of my videos. Now in case you don't know what my channel is all about, I love reviewing eyeshadow palettes, trying those out and really sort of uh, figuring out what I like and giving you recommend uh, recommendations and another thing that I love to do on this channel is try out Essence and Catrice products. I already filmed a video with all of the new Catrice products a few weeks ago so make sure to link that in the description box down below in case you would like to see what they have got going on in their new lineup. In case you didn't know, Essence and Catrice are sister brands that are owned by the same mother company called Cosnova. They are located in Germany I live in the Netherlands, so we tend to get these products quite quickly. I ordered everything off of cosmeticforless.de. This is a German website that I think shops, like ships to a lot of different countries. However, if you don't live in Europe, it may be very expensive in terms of shipping. I therefore do not know when you will be getting these products. If for instance, you're in the US, I'm not a brand representative. I was able to get my hands on these products and I'm filming a video with it straight away. These just came in. I managed to swatch everything, so I have a little bit of a sense of what we've got going on, but these things will definitely have to go into rotation because I am someone who doesn't like to go off of first impressions. So that's why in a few months time, once I've had a chance to try all of these new Essence and Catrice products, I will do a roundup video where I share all of my thoughts. And in the meantime, I will be putting these into shop my stashes and reviews will be going up on the blog as well. So that's what I've got going on for you today. And there isn't that much that is very, very new in terms of makeup, which is why I can, I think we can like browse through things quite quickly because I have one, two, um, yeah, a couple of new skincare products. Some of these I can already try in today's video, but not everything just yet. And then we'll move into the, into the makeup bits, you could say. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the Hello Good Stuff Happy Bliss Face Spray. And this is a sort of like face spritz that I personally really like to use as part of my morning skincare routine, just to get a layer of water on my face before the rest of my skincare goes on. And I feel it just really helps with locking in moisture and really making sure I hydrate my skin especially if you go in with something like a hyaluronic acid, uh, then having some layer of wetness first to really draw things into your skin is actually a, a really good tip. And I have been trying the herbal version that they did in their previous update, um, but they have come out with a new one, and this is with a citrus fruit extract, but it says to feel energized and hydrating. So I think the orange in the bottle also kind of, you know, gives it away that this is going to smell very citrusy. And it did because I already spritzed it really quickly just to see what it would smell like. It says to shake this up. And then what I just like to do is give me a couple of spritzes. Like so. And that's it. And yes, this smells very citrusy. It's very orangey sort of heavy. I think it's just a scent. It also looks orange in the bottle. True be told, these spritzes, I've tried a couple, uh, the Mario Badescu, one of my favorites is the vitamin C one from the body shop. And really, if you look at the ingredients, it's essentially water and glycerin, so it's really not that <laughs> sort of, you know, adding all that much. You could very easily make it yourself if you'd like. But I've been liking these little spritzes from, uh, from Essence, and I actually am on my second bottle of the herbal version that has a green sticker but may have been discontinued in favor of this by now, because with Essence you just never know. Then next up we're gonna go in with a new product, which is their uh, Skin Loving Sensitive Face Serum. Um, so this doesn't say it's a primer, I actually have another product that says it's a primer, so I thought I could use this as part of the skincare part of this, ver uh, of this video. Um, but this looked very much like a primer when I bought it, but it's just a moisturizing face serum, so I thought we could use this because that's the way I like to go. I use the face spritz, and then I like to go in with a serum, so. And I did try a lot of the products from the uh, Skin Loving Sensitive line, and I really liked it. It is white, it's quite thick, 
Um, and I have found that these products are definitely like fragrance free and they haven't set off my sensitive skin. I can get a lot of redness when it comes to skincare and stuff like that when I use it. And this has definitely not aggravated my face at all with the other products that I've tried from this line from Essence. This feels very pleasant on the skin, I have to say. Hmm. Indeed, no scent. It's quite rich and creamy feeling. I like that. My skin is going to love this. I can tell. And one of the reasons why I thought we could do this is because I'm currently using a Essence moisturizer as part of my current skincare routine. This is their Sika face cream, also from the Hello Good Stuff line. Again, not sure if this is still available, but this was released in their previous roundup. And so I only really started using it a few weeks ago. Um, and I really actually enjoy this. Like, it, again, doesn't set off my skin at all. It's a really nice, quite rich moisturizer. This does take a little bit of time to really sort of blend it into the skin. Like I, I struggle with this still looking white on my skin sometimes. Maybe I'm just using too much, but this again, no real like perfumey kind of scent, more like a clean scent. And this has been great for my winter skin because it's quite rich and creamy. I would not recommend this if you have an oily skin type for sure. And to finish off our skincare routine, we have the Hydra Hero uh, Under Eye Stick. Now, the stick itself is a bit big. It won't fit into my under eye area. Uh, but what this is, is like a clear bluish tinted balm kind of thing. And the way I found as I was trying to swatch this, the way it works best is if you just use your finger to warm it up. And then it feels very uh, like wet. So I'm just going to apply it like this on my under eye area just to add a little bit of hydration. I normally go in with an eye cream, but I thought this looked like a fun product to use. And then I have one more skincare product, but we can't use it today. And I can't really read how to use it. <laughs> so I'm not sure whether you're supposed to use all of this. This is the Daily Drop of Energy Ample Face Serum, uh, glow boosting. So it's like this orangey thing. And then when you take the lid off, has one of those droppers like there's a little stopper here and then there is this like button kind of thing I'm not sure how to use this so I'm gonna have to try this out I'm gonna have to read some directions on the website because because it's a clear bottle and then they put a clear sticker on with orange lettering and the bottle is orange and the liquid is orange so I can't read what this says so yeah, I'm gonna have to update you on that when I do my video in a couple of months. Now it's time for the makeup. <laughs> so that was a bit of a segue into skincare for a minute because there were more skincare products that I was interested in than makeup products, really. There isn't all that much that's new that really intrigues me. So then we have primer first, and this is their Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer, hydrating and smooth base with watermelon water and niacinamide. So it's a serum primer and I have been using their serum primer other kind of products that came in this line. Uh, this is a primer serum. This is a serum primer. I don't know. This works as a face primer. This works as a face primer too, I'm sure. But this, I think Essence has been looking at glow recipe a little too much because this, yeah, this, um, this smells like the Glow Recipe watermelon stuff. Like, you know, artificial watermelon. Watermelon, you know, Lip Smacker, Jolly Rancher watermelon. So it's not a good scent. Um, it felt really nice when I swatched it on the back of my hand. Like, it's a pump and then you just have, you know, it's not too liquidy. So I thought this could be nice. It feels hydrating on the skin. So I'm not sure whether this is supposed to be more of a skincare product or a primer, but I'm using it as primer today. Okay, so save for this scent, I don't think this is a very offensive product at all. I did use three pumps to cover my entire face. So also if you were to use this as a face serum, I think you might run out of it very quickly because you need quite a bit of product to cover your entire face. Um, by the way, if my skin looks a little red, that's from my fingers touching my face. Like if I just dab my, my finger onto my skin, I already get redness. That's, that's how my skin reacts to things. 
unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's what that serum looks like. It does, yeah, what, now that it's being absorbed into the skin, I can feel a little bit of tackiness, which is good because they do, out of everything that's new that isn't all that exciting, they have released a new base. And this is their Hydra Hero 24 hour hour hydrating tinted cream with 88% natural ingredients and SPF of 15 and I got it in the lightest shade which is 05 natural ivory. So like a trees they've come up with a skin tint tinted moisturizer kind of product and this felt really lovely on the back of my hand but as you will see when I swatch this on the back of my hand I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick up on this, but it's way too dark for me. Like, it's not as bad as with the Catrice. Like, the Catrice looked like four shades too dark, but this looks a little bit better. Now, I've learned my lesson with the Catrice that a sponge isn't the way to go with these products. So, I'm going to try and put as much of this on my skin with my fingers, and then I'm going to use a foundation brush to buff it in. So, here we go. So what do we think? I'm going to take a close-up mirror straight away because with the S with the Catrice I had definitely had some issues. By the way, if you want to see the full review of that Catrice skin tint that they came out with, I already posted it on my blog. And I can tell you it's not, it's not a good product. Uh, this one, no weird pilling. It actually quite looks like skin. It's just on my nose here, which is always a little dry. I can definitely like see the texture that it adheres to. Um, it is too dark. Like, I can definitely see where the foundation sits and where it ends, but we can fix that with bronzer, I'm sure. But with the Catrice, like, it completely broke up over here and, like, around my chin, and this is not doing that. And it has definitely a little bit more coverage than the Catrice one had. That one just kind of disappeared <laughs> into nothing. I have a Essence um concealer and powder as well to use but these are in my shop my stash these aren't new products so i'm just going to speed you through the stay natural concealer and the sensitive skin powder so let me check because with the catrice it really came down to like how it powdered and like once i layered other products on top that it started looking very weird and peeled off my skin with this i don't have that experience at all i thought my nose was looking a little patchy at first with the concealer once i started blending that on top but now that I've powdered it and I've set everything into place, it's looking pretty okay. But I am curious how this is going to wear as we're sitting here and doing the rest of this makeup look. Because it might still look horribly in the end, of course. Now next up, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this product around for because the Electric Go Glow Color Changing Lipstick isn't necessarily my jam. I mean, the neon green packaging and then... I'm not sure if this is going to show up on camera, but it's like a clear pink lipstick with actual like holographic glitters in them. I, I know who's going to love this. My four-year-old niece is going to absolutely adore this. This looks like kids makeup. It's supposed to be, I think, one of those balms that just gives you a little bit of shine on your lips. Um, I definitely already swatched it on the back of my hand and it seemed to go on clear at first and then change color. So I'm going to put this on my lips to see what it does before we move on to any other lipsticks. So this feels very nicely on the lips, like it's very much that balmy kind of like texture. So I love that. Is it doing something yet, do you guys think? <laughs> I'm not sure yet how much of a difference it's going to make in my, in my lip color, but it's supposed to make your lips look more pink. That's what it's supposed to do. Then, we're moving on to brows. So for brows, I'm going to use a very particular brush here. This is actually an Essence brush that I bought years ago, um, and it's my favorite brush to use with pomades and liquid brow products, because what they have come out with is the uh, Brow Like a Boss Ink Brow Gel. I have this in the shade Blonde, and it is similar to a product that I've used before from Urban Decay, and that I've used before from L'Oreal where you get this brush tip applicator and that has a product on and that you need to put into your brows. However, 
this brush is far too thick and deposits way too much product for this to look natural. And this is one of those brow tattoo products. I'm not sure if you can see, but I swatched this earlier on and then tried to take it off with a makeup wipe. This was literally on for like 30 seconds or less. And I already have like edges where it has dried down, where it has stained, which is why I'm really happy that I get to do this today because I'm taking a shower tonight. So if this looks horrible, I'll be able to scrub it out of my brows for sure. Because very often if you use a cleanser in the shower or any sort of like cleansing gel or balm, these products will not last. But they, they usually last like if you go swimming and all it does is get wet, these things will last. So I'm going to use my brush to take a little bit of the product and sort of try and see if I can push this into the brows, like by drawing little hair strokes. That's the aim, which is why I like this, because it's very, very fine. I'm not sure what this brush is called. It's an eyeliner brush, according to Essence. Ooh. All right, so this is not necessarily my jam. I don't think I'll use this a lot anymore, but I thought it was fun to try it. I'm not sure about the shade. It seems to be quite a yellow shade, and my, my brows are very ashy and like blonde and cool toned, so I feel there's a bit of a clash between the product and my natural brow color, which is a shame because Essence can do some really nice brow products. Their Make Me Brow Brow Gel is one of my all-time favorites. I've tried many of their brow pencils and I have had no issues with the shade there. It's just the way this dries down, it, especially in this brow, it looks very yellow toned to me in the viewfinder. So that I'm not sure is really my vibe. And then we're moving on to face products. I have an older blush that I'm going to use in tandem with these two products. They've come out with the Kissing in the Light Illuminating Powders. Now, if you look at the shades of these, I thought this could make a nice bronzer for me and I was hoping that the pink in the other one would be enough for it to be a glowy blush, but it's not. I already swatched this and it turns very beige very quickly. So this I'm going to use as a highlighter, this is going to be my bronzer, and then I have an old matte touch blush in Blossom Me Up that I'm going to be using for the cheek as well. So let me just swatch these for you <clears throat> so that you have an idea of what these might look like. They're both very light. One is definitely deeper uh, and more like golden toned and the other one is more like a beige. So that's why I thought one could be a bronzer and the other could be a highlighter. We'll see, we'll see if I'm right. So that is what the cheek look looks like. I think the bronzer, it definitely is a little bit more glowy than I would normally go for, but it works on my skin as a bronzer. If you have deeper skin, maybe this can be a highlighter for you. Uh, but if you're very fair, it's definitely more of a bronzer, but I feel it is still quite fair. So I'm not sure why they put this in their summer collection. I'm not sure. Um, the other product is definitely more of a highlighter on me and it's going to be a highlighter that's going to work for a lot of different skin tones. It's like, it still works, like it's a, it's a good highlighter for me, but if you're very, very pale and you don't like warm highlighters on yourself, I don't think this is going to work for you good because it's got a bit of a champagne, like a soft champagne toastiness to it that you may not enjoy. However, if you have a warmer undertone and if you have more medium skin, then I think this may be very lovely on you for sure. So this is, I think, a very universal product. Depending on your skin tone, these can either be a bronzer or a highlighter, depending on how you want to use them. I think they're pretty products. Are they must-haves though? I don't think so, but I mean, I was definitely sucked in with how pretty this looked with this like shell design or like a light beam kind of thing. I think it's very, very pretty and cleverly done. And then a little disappointing, I was very much hoping that we in Europe would get the remainder of the little six pan palettes that they came out with. We only got four of those and in the US you could actually buy more. And in the US, two more have been released so far. However, I checked, I even checked the official uh, uh, Essence website for Germany 
and none of those little palettes have been released here. What they did release in terms of eyeshadow are these like destination palettes, which I feel they've already done. Like they had an entire line with like New York and Tokyo and they did this entire line. There was a Paris palette. But now we have Rome and Miami. So we have the Benvenuti a Roma. Sorry, I don't speak Italian. I'm terrible. If you are Italian, please correct me in a comment down below. I've never studied Italian, okay? And then we have Welcome to Miami. And especially the Welcome to Miami is very interesting because it has purples and like these like turquoisey tealy shades and then a bunch of like warm tone neutrals. So you have a neutral quad over here. Then you get some fun pops of color and then you have this really lovely berry shimmer. And actually, you might think it's Essence, right? It's cheap. But it's got pretty good pigmentation, like especially for a colorful palette by such an affordable brand. I think that doesn't look very bad. The one I want to use today though, and that has to do with the fact that I will be swatching a bunch of lipsticks for you as well. So I'm gonna go in with the Roma palette because this has more neutrals. It's like warm tone neutrals, but as you can see, this is quite bland over on this side, but then you do get this like turquoisey shade, like a light bluish minty green shade, a darker green and a dark brown. So this is perhaps a little bit more wearable for every day. And then you have one that has some fun pops of po uh, color. I think there was a third one, but I forgot which one it was and it didn't look that interesting to me. And then to round out the eye, eye look, we're gonna go in with their new dip liner in brown. So they only did this in a black before, but they have been adding brown liners, which I think is great because if I wear anything that resembles a true, true eyeliner, I go for a brown instead of a black because I find it softer and a bit more natural. So we're gonna go for a super natural look. I think I'm just going to use uh, some of these like very light shades, like these six I'm probably going to use for the eye look just to have something on with the eyeliner. And then I'm going to do mascara and then we're going to do the lipsticks. So let me zoom you in for this eye look. Right, so that was the eye look that I did. So I did indeed go in with these four shades. So I used the two corally shades on the lid uh, and I ended up topping this like light champagne -y gold in the middle of my lid just to add a bit more dimension because I felt this shimmer wasn't doing a lot even though I layered it with a finger and used a setting spray to spray it down and wet it. Um, this is in the inner corner, that was very pretty. This I used to blend out the crease and these two are on the lower lash line as well. So these were okay shadows. I'm not certain yet whether I'm going to like all of the shades. I definitely have to see how this goes. Um, the eyeliner was pretty good. I just, if it looked very wonky, I do apologize. I'm just not really good at eyeliner. My eyelids are quite textured and that's why I kind of use the stamping method because then I usually get the smoothest finish. Um, but especially on this side, I feel there's loads of bumps, but Cleaning those up would mean covering up most of the eye look, which I don't want to do. So I do like the quality of this eyeliner. I like that it's a very deep dark brown. Already swatched it on the back of my hand and it doesn't appear to be waterproof, in case you were wondering about that. It doesn't say anywhere on the packaging either that it's going to be waterproof. So let me move in to the last part of this video, which is going to be all eight lipsticks in their new Hydra Matte lipstick range. So. I do loads of Essence and Catrice reviews and I have a lot of videos up 
where I have dedicated a video to a new Essence and Catrice lipstick line. But right now, all they're doing is this, and while they look cute, I'm not too sure whether I'm going to like these, because these lipsticks, they say Hydromet, they seem very creamy when I swatch them, but the shade range is again not super interesting, even though the shade range seems better than what they have been doing in the past. So I won't be dedicating a full video to this, but I will be speeding you uh, through all of these lipsticks and me applying them on my face. And then at some point in time, in the next couple of uh, months, I will do a dedicated uh, blog post to these on my blog. If you want to see close-up swatches of what these look like on my lips. I just haven't had time for that yet. Um, but this is the first shade. And this is a mauve shade. And the reason why I don't want to do, do, do a dedicated video on this is because... Essence lipstick, lipsticks are just never my favorite. I ended up decluttering almost every single Essence lipsticks I ever bought in my life. And I know that these are not going to last very long because these have that fake watermelon kind of scent to them. Like if you've ever tried a watermelon lip smacker, that's what this smells like. And it even has a dusty smell. So I will be swatching these on my lips, but I don't think that these are going to make it into my daily makeup rotation. By the way, the uh, lip, this lip product that I tried on first, there is definitely a little bit something more pink going on in the center of my lip, but I don't feel it made a huge difference. So yeah, these are all eight of the Essence Hydra Matte lipsticks that are new in their line. There were a couple of shades that surprised me that I hadn't expected just from swatching them, and it's these final two shades. So 407 uh, is this really vibrant, almost neon kind of red, which I did really enjoy. Uh, I like the look of that. It's really fun for spring, I think. And also this one that I'm wearing towards the end, which is 408 Pink Positive, which is this one in the swatch. It is a red, but it has a very clear pink undertone, and I like that because there are quite a lot of reds out on the market, but very often they lean orange or more blue toned, and I like that we get something that's a little bit more pink leaning because, again, for the spring-summer season, this just r reminds me of ripe strawberries in the summer, so I do really like that this, this kind of lipstick shade definitely brings me joy. I will have to try out this lipstick range a little bit more, in terms of longevity and how these actually wear on the lips and whether they stay put. Um, because they are supposed to be hydrating, I think these might disappear. And then with shades like this, if this starts to move around, you're not going to look very, very classy within seconds, especially if you still have to wear masks. So I'm not sure whether this is going to be my favorite, but I will be testing it probably out more with 401, which is movement. Um, that shade, I think, was very flattering on me as well in terms of, like, the nudes that we have going on here. Uh, so, yeah, these are all of the shades. These feel very rich and creamy on the lips when they go on. I do have to say something, though, because, as I already mentioned at the start of the video, I already took some time to swatch all of these products before sitting down to film this video because I like taking pictures of my products when they're still pristine so that I can use them for blog posts or maybe on an Instagram or whatever so that I always have like a whole host of pictures around and I swatch these on my arm and I'm not sure you can you can't see it anymore because it's already disappeared but the minute I took these off my skin reacted and it became very red and I sort of had goosebumps but on this side of my arm, which hardly ever happens. If I have goosebumps, it's always the tops of my arms, not the bottom part. So my skin definitely reacted to something that's in this formula because I have been using the same makeup wipes for years, so that can't be it. And I hadn't put any other product on my arm yet. 
so it wasn't some sort of combination. So I'm not sure how these are going to fare if you have very sensitive lips. There may be something in this formula that you might react to, which is another reason why I don't want to do a dedicated video with these. But there will be a dedicated blog post at some point in the next couple of months for sure. Um, yeah, these do surprise me quite a bit. I don't like the scent. I do like the texture. There are some interesting shades here, but in terms of like, is this the happiest, newest of the new, most groundbreaking lipstick range I have come across in recent years? The answer is no. And I hope you got a feel for all of the shades that are around in this new Hydra Matte range. And the other products that I've shown you so far, the foundation is caking up on my nose especially. Like I can see pores, I can see some caking, it seems to be disappearing on this side of my nose as well. And this has been on for like less than 30 minutes. So again, something I'm gonna have to wear throughout the day to really make up my mind. So that is probably going to be one of the first products I will be reviewing from everything I've shown you today. So that's it, that's all I have for you. Thank you so very much for watching today's video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I hope to see you in my next one. Take care, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye.